But first, here's my take. President Trump's threat to close the U.S.-Mexico border has confused even his allies. We will close the damn border. We're going to give them a one-year warning. And if the drugs don't stop or largely stop, we're going to put tariffs. And if that doesn't stop the drugs, we close the border. I don't think we'll ever have to close the border. Uh, I may shut it down at some point. But on the broader issue of legal immigration, Trump seems to be shifting his position. In his 2019 State of the Union address, the president declared, I want people to come into our country in the largest numbers ever, but they have to come in legally. Immigration hardliners did not take this well, but the president has since reasserted the idea. The day after the State of the Union, Trump told reporters, I need people coming in because we need people to run the factories and plants and companies that are moving back in. And Politico reported this week that Jared Kushner is quietly developing a proposal to increase legal immigration into the United States. If this is Trump's new and improved immigration policy, the president might find his way to a powerful compromise. Real crackdowns on illegal immigration, coupled with reform and maybe actual increases in legal immigration. It also happens to be a smart policy idea. A new essay in the journal International Security points out that by 2050, the United States is projected to be the only major world power with an increase in its population. The authors tie this fact to more dynamic economic growth and also America's continued ability and willingness to play a major military and political role worldwide. The data on other major powers is striking. UN projections show that by 2050, China and Russia will have a 20% drop in people of working age. Germany's working age population will drop by 17%, Japan's by 29%. This will likely translate into slower growth, less economic vitality, and greater passivity on the world stage. America's working age numbers are set to rise by 12% in the same period. In fact, only three other major developed countries will see increases in their working age cohort, Australia, Canada, and Britain. But all four countries enjoy this boost only because of immigration. China, on track to be the greatest economic, political, and technological competitor to the United States, faces a demographic challenge that is even more dire than has been previously anticipated. In 2018, China's birth rate fell to its lowest level since 1961, a year of widespread famine. It appears that the communist regime's efforts to reverse the nation's long-standing one-child policy have simply not worked. Amid all the noise about immigration, it's easy to forget the big picture. Immigration means a more robust economy. It usually means younger workers, which translates into greater dynamism and more innovation. Remember, most Nobel Prizes are awarded to scientists for work they did when they were young. Most companies are founded by people when they are young. If you look over the last two decades, many of America's crucial competitive advantages have been copied by the world to the point that other nations often do it newer and better. Think of well-regulated market economics, technological investments, infrastructure, mass education. So what does America have left to truly distinguish itself? Well, over the last half century, the U.S. has handled immigration better than most other countries. It takes in people from everywhere, assimilates them better, integrates them into the fabric of society, and is able to maintain an environment in which the new immigrants feel as invested as the old. This will probably be America's core competitive advantage in this century.